please excuse the beeping. I'm running my scanner right now and I thought I'd multitask. This is the first iteration of just romping Bronco restores. Today we have my beloved Canonet 28. Got this filter on it that I'm not using. The filter ring on this is interesting because it's a 48 millimeter instead of like a more standard 49 millimeter or 52 millimeter. So kind of rare to find um, filters that fits, but this is a Canon 48 millimeter skylight. So this was obviously designed for use with the Canon 28, the Canon QL17, um, G3, all the models with the 48 millimeter threads there. I'm gonna keep scanning and quickly run over what I'm gonna do with this camera. So this, if you've watched my other videos, this is one of my favorite cameras that I own. I am the second owner of this camera, the guy I bought it from. He was the original owner, obviously, and really just kept this in like pristine condition. There's a few like bumps and scrapes on it, but I believe these are all from me just kind of being, you know, careless with it. And it's got this like nice metal body, so it's, it's really hard to kind of mess up unless you are dropping downstairs and stuff. This is probably the first time in, you know, 10, 12 months that I've not had a roll of film in here. I just finished shooting this roll of Foma Pan. I had it in there for about a month maybe, maybe a little bit more than a month, but that's kind of what I love about this camera. It's just like, I can just have a roll of film in here and take it out with me wherever I go and it's, it's ready to go. No film in here, so I figured I'd take this time to give it a nice deep cleaning that it deserves. Recently I got some more light seal replacement foam. It's just this foam with the adhesive back so you can kind of cut it to, to fit what you need. So we'll be replacing the light seals because they're not bad. Well, they're actually like in really good condition compared to my other Canonets light seals. But I just kind of want to replace it while I'm doing this stuff. So we'll also be taking the top off, cleaning off the, uh, the glass there, getting back there, cleaning the glass. The lens unit itself is fairly clean. There's no obvious signs of mold or anything which is good. Um, it's a little harder to check with this because it doesn't have the bulb function, so you can't keep the blades open to kind of look through like you can with the with the 17. So what I could do here, set it on bulb, make sure it's on 1.7 there, pop open the back, and then hold it open. And that way you can kind of like look through and make sure that, you know, all of the elements are clean. And this one is very clean, but we're not talking about this right now. So I'm just gonna go back over here. And again, apologies about the noise. I'm trying to multitask. So I'm hoping that it doesn't pick up as loudly as it is in my ear, but I wanna do more of the in-depth cleaning first and then finish off with the cosmetics. So, real quick, to get this off, I gotta get, I have to get smaller channel locks because this is just a bit of overkill. If you are going to do this yourself, you wanna make sure that you have pliers that will fit, but the, you don't wanna chew this up too much because Again, I got this in really good condition. I'm trying to keep it that way. So it's a matter of applying enough pressure to where it doesn't slip and you scrape, but not too much pressure that you chew into it. So, did a pretty good job there. Again, smaller channel locks would help. Also, if you took this and like wrapped it in some like tape or something, that kind of works. You don't have as much grip on it, but you know price to everything. So I'm gonna screw this off, that back. Don't fall, please. Okay, so this piece comes off very easily. Looks like that. So this is the bottom bit is where it screws in. And then you have the advanced lever. The advanced lever, two washers, and then that top bit. 
that screws in. I don't have the correct uh, vocabulary for most of the parts I'm talking about. So I'm hoping that the visual of me just showing um, the things that I'm working with makes up for my lack of intelligence. So we have the shutter button here and underneath here is, I guess the other portion. And this has a slot actually that fits in just like that. You wanna keep that together because it's kind of useless without this part. So keep that in mind. That's those components there. Lift up the back, because then we're going to take off the rewind lever. Then this is the same with like most cameras. They need to take the rewind lever off. You just kind of sit a screwdriver in between the prongs there and then unscrew it. So easy enough. The Canonet top has three screws. These are all uh, GIS screws, and I believe they're all the same size, so you don't have to remember too much of like, too much specifically where they're going. Just have to make sure you don't lose them. So then top will lift off. I just lift it off straight because there's no need to dink around with it. This is what the top looks like. You know, it's, it's a great build. All the Canonet tops kind of function the same way, which I can appreciate and respect. Differences with the QL17, there's obviously a, a mechanism here to make the battery check light work. This one doesn't have that, so just another thing that keeps it simple. So the space here is freed up because there's no light. So yeah, just kind of take a quick look at it. Frame counter, here's the contacts for the hot shoe. This is the metering system right here. You can see there's a little needle there. And yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's a really straightforward camera. If you wanted to get to the, you know, take the lens portion off and all that, you could try your hardest to scrape off this leatherette. That's very challenging. I've yet to like fully master it because the leatherette is very thin. You have a hard time seeing it there. And they use this adhesive that either it deteriorates or the leatherette deteriorates and it's just really hard to get it off there without throwing like without showing stress marks from pulling the leatherette so that's something to bear in mind but underneath that there are two metal plates here two screws um, the metal plates lift off and then underneath that there's a screw there a screw there a screw here and a screw here and then this portion would come off obviously there's you know, mechanics in the way that you need to look out for. But, you know, if you're going to get that far, um, don't watch this video because this is not for that. I'll make a separate video for that in the future. But now we're just going to do light cleaning. So there's this little plastic piece here. It sits on top of the viewfinder. And this is a good look at the focusing system of the Canonet because as you can see, this is the little window that creates the yellow light, or the little yellow square. So that reflects through here, into here, and into here. And then when you move it, it moves that little deal there. So just kind of something neat, but it does get kind of dirty in here because this camera's, you know, getting up there in age. So it doesn't hurt to kind of take care of it. You want to be really light when you're getting the dirt out of here because you could, and I might have, nope. You can occasionally bump things out of place with a lot of viewfinders. They use this like frosted glass. And if you use like contact cleaner, it will, it'll like clean the contact glass off. So you'll just, it, it won't look how you want it to. So for instance, something like this, how this looks like it's all gray and stuff. If you use a certain kind of chemical, you could risk washing all that away. So you don't want that to happen. So I just avoid doing that. And this is just me dusting. Now, if you're doing the outside, the outside's a little different because this was designed to be a little bit more durable. So you can, you know, use contact cleaner with that. And everything looks perfectly fine in here. Right here's the shutter. 
So you can see when you click down on that. And then there's the little needle. You can make sure that that moves freely, and it does. You can just expose that to different things, different light sources. It, with something as simple as a Canon at 28, it's really easy to just get under there and kind of clean stuff, so that's why I do that. <clears throat> and most of the things are mechanical on here, so you don't have to worry too much about sudden electrical failures. And even if you do, it's incredibly unlikely that it will happen under the top of the camera. I forgot to put this plastic piece on. So it's a good thing that I looked down. And it's not, it's not vital to put this piece back on because it just kind of covers it up, but there's really no reason to not have it on. Most of the time they're glued on, which is nice. This one kind of came unglued, but it's just an added level of protection. This isn't watertight or anything like that, so things will get in here, debris will get in here, so it's just better to have whatever extra level of protection. Let's start by putting the screws back in. I always start there. I make sure that this is sticking up so just that way you get to that step, you don't have to wrestle with it. Pull the back up. And then it's just as simple as putting it in there. Now you don't want to be too forceful with this, or you could, this is like a plastic base, so you could actually like rip this out and then just break your rewind lever. So you want to be careful about that. Something to keep in mind. This is disgusting. Disgusting. Okay, so now we get to the parts we can actually kind of clean. We have, it's not like bad. It just kind of gunk over the years. And a lot of this is probably residual grease from the mechanisms and stuff to make sure that they move well, but it also just looks better, in my opinion, to just kind of clean it up like that. Like, this is one of those things that nobody's gonna notice. You're not gonna be walking around and some bystander will stop and just be like, bro, did you like, did you clean that advanced lever? Oh my, oh, it looks so good. You know, it's just, it's one of those things that you will know at the end of the day, that your advanced lever is the cleanest <laughs> and that matters <laughs> it doesn't matter okay make sure you put the washers back in the way that you got them out <clears throat> it's important to know um, and i had a little bit of difficulty uh unscrewing this so i'm just gonna wipe that up to make sure that any gunk and gras do isn't there so next time I need to take this off for whatever reason. It's not that difficult. Screw that back on. Fantastic. And before I get too comfortable with the notion that this is all better, I like to just do a few quick test shots to make sure it's working okay. It seems to be just fine. You can see here that this is a dent caused by me probably dropping this on a rock or something. And it's not terrible because it's not breached the back door at all, but it is something to be wary of. The light seals on this, let's talk about that. <clears throat> Way easier to get to than the QL17 because there's not the giant QL mechanism here. So we've just got this bit here, this long thick bit there, and then this top bit here. The top bit here honestly looks perfect, so I'm just gonna leave that. I'm going to take this portion off though, replace that, and also just replace that. We'll just pull off just like that. Just use them 
little scissors here. And what's great about having this intact is it's just easier to use it to size exactly the shape foam I need. So that's great. Now for this bit, I'm just going to see if I can kind of yoink it off. Got that, that's good. It's not great, but it'll do. This was, this bit here, was what I cut off for the Canonet QL17. So then I should be able to just kind of match that and cut this portion off, easy peasy. Got that seal put in, that looks very nice. So again, it's gonna be a little difficult to kind of clip in, and when you open it up, it'll launch open because it has a lot more mass there pressing against it. But in the long term, that'll, that'll flatten down gradually, and it'll just look very, very good. All of my images will look perfectly fine. I'm looking forward to that because few of these have had a little light leaking issue. So my ME Super is one that I'll be doing this with next, but for now, I'll just finish up the cleaning. I don't like to use too much um, fluids when it comes to the glass, especially with something like this, with a lens like this. It's really deep and gets down in there. I just don't want like there to be any kind of hazing issues between the elements. This is like, one of one of my prized possessions not because it's the best camera in the world it's it's really special to me i know the guy who bought this camera you know and i am the second person and i find that like with all this stuff that i bought up all these cameras that i've stockpiled like that's cool like it's cool to have so many tools for specific things but to just have something like this that works very well at just being a fun camera and is in such good condition I, I just think that's cool with these like nice sharp lines here sometimes you'll find that some dirt buildup can gather so I don't like to use metal too much to scrape away at that because that shows on the metal but if you have like a wooden toothpick or something that usually works best other points of cleaning, right in here and back in here, just dirt build up and stuff. Really quickly, we're gonna do just a run over with my very nice Dollar Tree toothbrush and some vinegar. This is just for the leatherette. There's some, you know, filth there. Very nice, there we go. Look at that. You cannot tell a difference because it probably looks exactly the same as when I first showed you, but it just, in my perspective here, I'm a little closer to it. I think it looks pretty good. And it'll just run a little bit more smoothly. So that's kind of what it's all about, is just taking care of the things that take care of you. So you wanna just make sure that you kind of keep things clean and working properly, especially if it's kind of simple like this. I will be going over my Emmy Super next. I have a roll of film in there currently, but when I get through with that, I will make a full breakdown video of tearing that apart. If this seems like it's a little bit out of your wheelhouse, something that you might not feel comfortable doing, perfectly understandable. All I request that you do at that point Check out my website down below. You can send me a quick email. You can say, hey, I have this camera. I need to just kind of be clean, maintenance or whatever, and I will get back to you.